morning everyone so it's rachel here and we're doing roxy's journal of stitchery sorry i've stepped away a second um so we're doing you would have watched sarah's video i just want to get my list we're doing um vintage christmas image or vintage winter image okay so that's about to throw you all for a bit of a loop i'm sure sarah's spoken to you about some alternatives i'm going to use this image that i printed on uh hemp antique hemp now some of you that got my packs would have gotten some of these images um and um so you might not have used it yet so you could use that um if you didn't get a pack which is highly likely because i only did a, a small amount of them um uh, you can you you can print on fabric so if you have a printer uh, you can print on fabric. So this is the hemp that I used for this. And um, it's, it's ironed onto freezer paper. I do have a video showing how I um, do actually print on fabric. And so I'll link that in the description box. Um, normally I, I do it two ways. Or I, I use the freezer paper. But because the hemp is heavy, so it depends on the heaviness of your fabric, my printer didn't like taking it through so what i did to solve the problem was i just took i'll just grab some of my bodgy um washi tape that i don't like so much this one it's not really me it came in a pack um you know like a subscription thing um so what i did was i would just take a piece of washi and it worked so i would then put it over the top like so and i would put that through my printer not like that and it prints on the on the hemp so um, yep I've got a whole video about that or otherwise the other option if you don't have freezer paper and you've got cardstock you can take a um, removable spray adhesive any brand a removable spray adhesive or spray glue um, you spray it on your um, cardstock and then you put your fabric on and trim it down now, before I would print on this, I'd just go around with my scissors and make sure I've got no strands um, there so that doesn't get caught in my printer. Another option is you can buy photo paper, photo fabric. So this is inkjet, inkjet printable fabric. And you can get like twill, you can get all different types. See, so this is a different type here. It's a more grainy type. This is a poplin, a cotton poplin. It's smooth. So I've got it. This, they were like they weren't in the one pack. They were in two different packs, but I still have a few left here. Um, so let me just see if this one says what this type was. Cotton canvas. So that's that one. And then this is the poplin cotton. It's a finer um, grain. Um, now these are the a US size. Um, I bought them on Amazon. I'll sh just like show you here so you can see it. Um, just look up uh, fa um, fabric for inkjet printers and it's really just fabric glued onto something that's a bit like a freezer paper they do go very nicely through your um, printer if you've got an inkjet and um, and you can just maybe print for um, vintage or antique postcards that you can quite often find in the public domain on the internet or you could you know someone might have a digital that you like and you print that on your fabric and you can use that um, the other option is you could uh, paint be inspired by a, a vintage scene and you could paint it onto your fabric as well if you're a good painter um, I'm not such a good painter I could do like something vague like do a background um, sort of thing um, oh this is a quilters freezer paper just to give you an idea so this is a, a, a better freezer paper than the one that I've got here this was a roll of freezer paper so that I bought that as well to try that that's for um, piecing and appliquing and stuff that one but I haven't tried it yet I haven't opened it so there's that sort of thing option to iron onto any fabric cotton you don't want a fabric that's got um, too much of a, a grain to it but um, yeah when I, but I've, I've got a video on that so we won't go into all of that now um, and then Sarah may have spoken about because I haven't she, ob I, she she's obviously recording her video now too um, but we did chat yesterday about it um, you could be inspired by a vintage scene so maybe find one on Pinterest and you could embroider it you could do it like a, a red embroider red and white like a red embroidery do red work or 
black work or you know you could you can be inspired in many different ways you could get have a vintage coloring in book and trace it or reduce it and trace it and that can be your scene and you can applique little bits of it so you really can go to town with it um we're going to use i think sarah and mum will probably use um these in one year one of these images that i sent them um if you have the opportunity to print on fabric it really does open the door for many kinds of different things that you can do um, and make it more personal um, to you because um, it's yours. Like it might be an antique postcard that you have or a vintage postcard that you have and you want to put it onto fabric and then uh, put it in your journal of stitchery. So um, first of all, we need to do the page. So this is, I've cut this out. This is, um, this is just an antique piece of mattress sticking. And I quite liked it. I've ironed my little pouch, not very well. I didn't think I let my iron heat up. And I'm gonna, I mean, it's gonna be super easy for me today, um, this week, because um, I'm just thinking, do I wanna put something up there? Because I've, you know, I've got my envelope made already and I put that video up over the weekend, if you missed that. Um, oh, here we go. I thought maybe. I might put, oh, I think I quite like that. I think I'm gonna stitch that on there. Um, and I've put my envelope down a bit further so we can work on that. And then next week we'll work on the little, um, it's kind of gonna be kind of like a little postcard sort of thing. Oh, actually, before I go on, I thought I should show you. Um, I did, <laughs> oh my goodness. I did do, do my gingerbread. I put these um, gorgeous glass buttons, they're vintage or antique, they were sent to me and I really wanted to put some, you know, them somewhere. Um, and so I've put those on and I did these little ones here. I also, um, the running stitch that I did down the side, I whipped it. So we've got um, in, our, in our first journal of stitchery, we did the samplers and we showed how you whip. Um, and I whipped the running, I did a running stitch around the um, door there and I, I whip that and I put little hearts on. Finish out. Now you'll notice that this is different to this. I can't find my thread. I cannot find it anywhere. I searched and searched. It's in a mess. I've probably flopped on the floor somewhere. I don't know. Um, so I had to use this silk one that was a similar colorway, but it's a bit darker and it obviously has a different feel about it because it was a silk thread so not and not a cotton. So I may take them out. Um, if I find my thread, but if I don't find my thread, they're just gonna stay like that. And I remember that I lost my thread. I can't decide if I wanna do any more on here. I think I'll just leave it for now. And um, it's fairly simple. I could put a little bit of holly there or a little bit of holly down here might be nice. I feel like I might need something there or some stitching, just some rows of canther stitching. Um, but I'm gonna kind of sit on it for a minute and um, I'll decide after. Oh, and I did also did a running stitch in the minty green around there and I whipped it with right white as well just to add a bit more texture to there because it was a bit bare so that is my little gingerbread house it's fairly simple I, there's been some very elaborate ones um, but I'm quite happy with it I like the little pom-poms along the top so there we go I could put little lollies along there like little beads or something but I, I, don't, I told you I didn't feel like pulling out my beads so I haven't okay so we need to work on this and I won't really today wanted to show you how I'm going to attach. You know, I could tuck that under there and it would stay. Yes. It wasn't the best choice, that trim. So you can, you know, there's a bit of um, not what not to do in my videos. So I'm going to go around this. I'm thinking I'm going to go round with what? A, maybe a green. Do I have green? I had some threads here somewhere. I don't have green. Just a minute. Let me get green. Try not to lose my threads. Hmm. I did like that one too. I'll find it. It'll, it'll appear. Mum said you'll just finish um, doing your pom-poms and then the thread will appear. It will reveal itself to you with great glee. Now, I'm just going to find, thinking I wanted to go around with green, but I've got to be careful it doesn't blend into the background. So I'm just trying to see here what would I like. Nope, no, none of them are revealing themselves to me. Maybe this one. 
Nope. Hmm. Blue? Maybe I'd like blue. I think I'd like blue. I got up and got green, now I want blue. Okay, I'm gonna use this blue. I love this blue. Okay, there we go. Change my mind in a flash. Now, am I on screen? Yes, I am. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, so the risk is I'll go off screen. I can make, take this off. I'm gonna thread my needle. I don't have to do anything much on my background. How about that? How's about that? So to update everybody on the lady from last week, it's been a week, touch wood. Touch wood, we have not heard a thing, touch wood. I'm hoping that she has a sensible husband that when she went home to tell her husband what she did, what happened, he'll say, well, you did the wrong thing, so don't bother going to the to anyone to complain about it. I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping she's not waiting for me to relax, is what I'm thinking. But I don't go on that road anymore, and I change cars. So, and, and Steph's, oh, Steph's faffing about about the the um, dash cam. He's he's going to um, he's getting quotes. I know I know you should get quotes, but yeah, I told him you need to get get these quotes done in a timely fashion because we are both quite often driving the cars by ourselves and we need to have proof of things if we need proof. So I'm just doing an overcast stitch around this printed. This is a um, a Christmas uh, Stamperia stamp that I bought many years ago, a pack, and they're really lovely, the stamps. <clears throat> I love them. So I just stamped it on, um, I think it was an old linen. I can't, oh, it might be a hemp, this one. Some of the hemp's, you know, you wouldn't stamp on a hemp that has a very big grain, but this one has a finer grain, so it stamps very well. Oh, and of course, if you print on hemp or linen or something like that with your inkjet printer, it's not going to be permanent in the sense that if you wash it, it could come out could fade over the time. I haven't fa experienced that. I've been printing on them for quite a few years now and I haven't seen that they fade. I've even washed one little piece to give it a go. I didn't actually put it through the washing machine but I wet it and squeezed it and soaked it and stuff and, and nothing. It actually didn't come out but who knows. Um, but with those um, purchase, they're not cheap those um, fabric papers from Amazon but um, you do get five sheets so depending what you print on them you do get quite a bit. You can like you can use you get you get quite a bit of use out of them is what I'm trying to say, um, and you and then you do if you want to make it permanent you wet them you give them a rinse under for a amount of seconds I can't remember how many it says it on the packet, um, and then you let it dry and you iron it and it becomes permanent which is the bonus of those ones there. So obviously the ones I sent out were not they should not be washed they are not permanent, in theory. I have heard from some people that if you you can um, like spray your fabric with um, hair dry, hairspray, not hair dry, hairspray, and then you let it dry for 24 hours and then you print on it and then you spray it again and that apparently will fix it. But I haven't tried it. So if anyone tries it, let me know. Let me know how you go sort of thing. Because, you know, I'm not use, I don't use them for projects. Like, I wouldn't use them for a quilt if I was going to be washing the quilt. Um, I would use it for, like, a, a wall hanging picture that might be framed or I'd just hang on the wall and not be washed. Um, but I wouldn't use it for a quilt that was going to go on a bed and then be washed fairly frequently. Not frequently, but, you know, a few times a year. I did actually stab myself, <laughs> but I didn't yelp. Because I was chatting. I, I, yes, so I saved you. No, I didn't break skin, but it was quite painful. I'm glad I chose blue. Because, you know, we are doing red, green and blue. Mostly. Now, if I wanted to, I could go and do some embroidery on there. But I don't think I will. I could. I'll think about that. Until next week. The 
the mat. I love the look of the mattress ticking. Sometimes they're very thick. They must be a tighter weave and they can be quite sometimes a little bit tough to pull your needle through. I don't think I'm going to make it all the way around. I'm going to have to grab another piece. Yeah, I scratched myself now. Okay, I'm going to grab another piece, another thread. I think I used four strands here. I didn't tell you that. It's really, I mean, the three, four, two, three, four, five, six strands, how much you use is really just how thick you want it, how much you want it to stand out. You really just make it up as you go. Right. So there's four there. I just had to double check. It's this thread here. I'll lose, I'll lose these threads. They've been hanging around for weeks. If I don't put them away, but it's because I haven't, I th one of my blocks I haven't finished. I can't remember which one it is. Oh, the village. Mm -hmm. And I've had them flying around because I was using it for that. I've only pulled out two. I'm going to double it over. Because I use two strands more often than four. And so I don't want to have a shorter bit of four strands. I want to just use the two. And then when I pull it out, there's a bit, still a bit left there. So I've doubled it over so it's four. And you'll see when I, I'm doing a raw edge here, so I'm not, I don't go too close to my, the edge of the fabric because it will just fray. And you won't catch it. You need to come down a few, a few millimeters, into the fabric. I don't know how many inches that is. Not inches, you know. I don't know what you call it, eighths of an inch. Maybe one eighth of an inch. There we go. And then. When I pull, I pull, take this thread out of the needle, I've got a, night, a, a decent length of two strands, which I might use for something. You see? That's why I did that. There we go. So I'll put those away in a second. Okay, so now what I need to do is attach my envelope. My fabric envelope. So I'm going to pin it everywhere. It's going to be bulky. It's, it it will, will have to definitely have to have a book with a big spine because it's going to be very bulky because this is chunky because I lined it as well. Put our pins to hold it in place. Nothing I ever do is perfect. Okay, so then I'm going to grab this thread. This is just a, I think it's a tatting thread got a whole lot of them with my sister at the antique market in Sydney and um, it's good for this sort of thing it's strong and it's a nice um, sort of ecru sort of color now I won't put you through all of me doing this but I will just I'm just going to slide see I'm just going to slide there and catch it and go under and then slide up again just catching the edge of my envelope you could even do it with a contrasting color if you wanted to see the stitches could be quite interesting I'll come back and stitch that corner down when I get all the way around See, I'm just catching the edge, as you would with um, any kind of applique, just catching it as you go. So, yeah, once you know the feature, you can even make the feature, you know, your nearly your whole page. And um, I thought it worked well with this one, with the vintage image. So yeah, I do. We do apologise that not everybody's going to have access to um, um, 
you know, like a printed vintage image. You might be able to go to somewhere, like in Australia, people can get things printed at Officeworks. Like if you were to get the Amazon, like the, um, that photo paper, um, they might be willing to do it because it is made for inkjet printers and you could take some images on a file, you know, thing and, um, and get them to print it for you. That would be worth trying. I think in a, in the US there's, a, I think I've heard people say they use staples or somewhere like that. I don't know. Places where you get things printed like a, yeah, office supply sort of store. Um, they, that might be a solution for some people who don't have a printer or one that would will take because like the Epson there are some models of the Epson like maybe the more expensive models that will take the fabric they might take the fabric paper I don't know like the photo paper the bought one um, I know my Epson wouldn't take my um, hemp it doesn't even like coffee dyed paper so um, yeah it just depends what type of printer you have um, they won't you know like you just have to take the risk if you want to and try it. If you don't, go and see if someone will print it for you. And it's not expensive, I don't think, to get things printed. Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, I have a um, my HP Insta Ink program, so um, of course, printing on fabric does take quite a bit of ink, uh, but it doesn't doesn't worry me because I just get. They, I, you know, I just have my set plan every month and, and they, it's the number of um, printouts that you do, it's not how much ink they use. So they just, when they see that your, um, your ink levels are going down, they just send you out more cartridges, whichever ones you need. It's actually a really good plan too because you're not buying, you know, some, like the yellow goes um, a lot faster than really yellow and black are probably the ones that go the fastest. And, um, and with the Instinct program, they... Because I have my machine has four cartridges, single ones. So rather than having to go and buy the pack every time, which is the four, and having you know many left over of maybe magenta and the um, blue, they just send you out what you need. So you 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 never have you don't have a um, surplus of any one color. There you go. That was a long spiel just to say that. And as, I, as I've been saying that, we're nearly all the way around. I might as well just stay here. Now, I could be, if I wanted to, but I'm not going to, I could even leave that open under there and that could be a pocket, but I don't, I'm not going to do that. That would be really going cray cray. Now, here where the, where the flap is, I'm actually just going to really be careful to go down there and try not to come right through because I did come through when I was stitching on the lace a little bit. Um... It's not really a problem. I just want to pin this down. I don't mind that I can see it. I could stitch a little image in there if I wanted to. Like, a you know, a printed image. If I wanted to cover it up. I will look at that next week, I think. This week we're just putting doing our background, really. And our, it's really our composition. And then I will have quite a bit of work to do on my little um, vintage image. And I'm thinking I might even um, go and print. I've got some, you know, antique backs of postcards in a digital kit. So I thought I might go and print out one of those and stitch that on the reverse side, even though it's not the exact shape of a um, postcard, my little image. I don't think it was a postcard. It was just like one of those ones that are put in things, you know, put in chocolates and stuff. I think it was one of those types. Um, so I'm not sure. But yeah, I might print, just stitch a postcard on the back, the back, the reverse side. So it looks like it's a postcard, but it's not. Then I need to come down here and I'm just going to come around the edge here. And I might, I might even, if I'm lucky, make it to the end. I might, I might not. I'll be looking forward to seeing what everyone does and I'm looking forward to seeing what my sister does because I'm not quite sure. She said she had it, when I was speaking to her before, she said she has it all planned. Um, so yeah, I'll be looking forward to seeing that.
so when I ironed my little I used my little iron um, my little mini travel iron um, sewing iron and um, I ironed it on this mat because this mat is actually an ironing mat so you can you don't have to pull out your big one don't you love it at the end you always unthread and I think I might run out I do I might make it let's see I'm just catching it on the edge and your thumb sort of guides you and tells you not to go any further. Oh, again. Okay, I'm going to end that off. I, I will have to do It's not worth not stitching it on properly. I'm going to in that off and get another piece. I've got a piece here. A length, not a piece, a length. So very chunky monkey page. It's going to be heavy in my book. Got a knot there, I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so it's stitched on. It wasn't hard. Didn't even take that long. Okay. So there is my, that's my page. And then, see I've got stitches in there. Um, it's not very big. I wonder what stamped things I have. I don't know where my stamped bits are. Put something like that in there. I could stitch that on if I were. I might even do that, but I don't know. We'll look at that next week. But this is going to slide in here. And it's going to and then you'll pull it out and so that will be my vintage scene um, now I'm going to put this on here I'll just invisible stitch it down and and then we're going to embellish around it I'm leaving that I'm just you won't be able to see that I'll be embellishing that and we'll be putting a backing on it as well I'm debating whether or not I might put some wadding I might even put wadding so it's even Oh gosh, that's going to make it even more chunky, isn't it? No, maybe I won't. Wadding would be really nice and make it really thick. But my page is already thick, so I won't. I'm just going to back it with the whatever I decide. So there we go. That's a pretty quick video today. But isn't that lovely? I love that. So that's my video for today. Um, this is my vintage image. Um, hopefully some of our suggestions have been helpful. Um, as I said, you could... Yeah, you might have, um, you might be lucky and have also a vintage um, Christmas embroidery transfer that you could iron on and, and stitch around. So, um, but if you have the opportunity of printing on fabric, it's a really cool um, thing to use because then you can do lots of embroidery around, around it. Um, you can choose bits and pieces to embroider if you want to. Um, and it's just a really fun, different way to do some stitching rather than just our standard applique and embroidery. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll be looking forward to seeing what you come up with. I know we're challenging you, but we challenge ourselves as well um, with many of them. So it's always fun to have a challenge. If it's easy, it's boring. Remember that. And, um, and thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.